Some of us will go to bed and in the morning, death snuck in and snatched somebody that was inside of our homes. Or we get a phone call. Our mother, our father, our grandmother, our grandfather, our child, our friend, our neighbor, who we saw just yesterday, spoke to, was laughing and talking. Death came that night and snatched him. I don't believe in any form of racism. I don't believe in any form of discrimination or segregation. I believe in Islam. I'm a Muslim. And there's nothing wrong with being a, being a Muslim. Nothing wrong with the religion of Islam. That just teaches us to believe in Allah as the God. And those of you who are Christians probably believe in the same God. Because I think you believe in the God who created the universe. And that's the one we believe in. The one who created the universe. The only difference being, you call him uh, God and, and I, we call him Allah. Jews call him Jehovah. If you could understand Hebrew, you'd probably call him Jehovah too. Uh, if you could understand Arabic, you'd probably call him Allah. Malcolm X was a racist, a nationalist, a man who said things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he had no right to say. Yes, he was a reformed criminal, but even after he was reformed in his conduct, he was still saying things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he had no right to say because Malcolm X was jahil. But the man who I need to speak about, his name is Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz. But we can't speak about him unless we come through Malcolm X. So let us be clear. Malcolm X lived a life which is impressive for non-Muslims. But for us Muslims, we have no concern about his life except three months before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life. Reformation and a new morality. Here comes the Quran. This is the very presence. This is the very premise of the need of the Quran in modern civilization. Because that was the need of the Quran 1500 years ago. And that is how the Quran brought forward a civilization that we are experiencing today. Now you might say to yourself, well, how did the Quran bring forward a civilization that we're experiencing today? We're going to discuss that. I'm going to qualify my statements. But keep this in mind. I'm saying to you that the basic thesis and answer, whether the Quran can be applied in modern civilization, the basis of it is that the Quran is a book of revelation, of inspiration and is a book of legislation that if it is followed it will reform the human being it will reform the family it will reform the society it will reform the government and it will reform the world <laughs> the woman that sleeps through the Fajr or doesn't perform her prayers, 
generally speaking, her family, they also will do the same. The woman who watches a lot of TV, her family will do the same. The woman that is selfish, she will raise a selfish family. The woman is the first university. What she teaches the family, in most cases, the family will never unlearn it. They will carry it the rest of their lives. Young people are dancing and drinking and drugging and fighting and stealing and creating problems so that the police have to come to the mosque or to their parents and say, you must control these children or otherwise we have to throw them into jail. You have a problem where the young people do not respect their parents. Young people don't want to stay home. Young people want to do what they feel like doing and we cannot do anything about it because the young people have an identity crisis. They don't know who they are. They don't know if they are Australians, Muslims. They have been to Australian schools, learned the Australian values and culture, but you have named them Ahmed, Fatima, Muhammad, so and so. You told them, don't do this. They don't know why not. You told them, read Quran. They never see you read it. You tell them, go to the mosque. When they come to the mosque, they see nothing but a group of old men sitting down. It is not enough I'm Iraqi Muslim, Nigerian Muslim. No, now I have to be, I have to be Sufi. Or I have to be Salafi. Or I have to be Sunni. Or I have to be Shi'i. Or I have to be Wahhabi. Or I got to be Alawi. Or I got to be this or that. It's not enough that we are Muslims upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muslims upon the monotheism of Ibrahim alayhi salam or that we are Muslims upon the Quran and the Sunnah. No, we have to distinguish ourselves from the other Muslims and we have to call ourselves certain names. Let's work like that all the different groups that's represented here. Let's get our imams together. Let's get the emirs that we set up, our chairmen, our leaders, let's get them together and ask them what's the deal? What's happening? What's the problem? Why you guys can't get together? Why you guys can't get together and choose whoever knows the most Quran, whoever knows the most of the sunnah, whichever of you is the oldest among you. Why can't you guys get together and do that? What's the problem? We don't ask them to do that, they won't do it for another 50 years. I mean, in the Jum'ah, we, on the Jum'ah, we talk first, and then we pray last. On the Eid, we do it just the reverse. We pray first, and after that, we're supposed to talk. The, Imam, the, the Muslims, after the, after, after the prayer is over, the, after the Imam do all the takbirs and all that, finish, he get up to talk, the Muslims break, breaking out. They starting to barbecue, the kids running all around, the brothers are talking, everybody got on new clothes, the sisters walking all around, and the imam, he talking, can't nobody hear him. Because the Muslims don't have no respect. If the khatib of the Muslims had respect, he would tell everybody, everyone sit down. And they would be sitting just like this and he could deliver to those 4,000, those 5,000 people as he's supposed to, but he cannot. You know, the, 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 the Arabs, they don't like the Pakistanis. And the Pakistanis, they don't like the Arabs. You know, and the, and the Africans don't like nobody. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that, brother. <laughs> I, I could have switched it around, you know, I switch it around sometimes. <laughs> so when you die, the moment that you die, and all of you will die, another part of the trip is over. And that part of the ticket is torn off and is gone. You will not return back to this life. Nobody has. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah.